Ketel K um, is um, one of three, you know, movies that is being featured in um, Film Africa 2017, Tarek Ghana at 60. And this is in celebration of um, Ghana's independence at um, 60 years of independence and making a feature of it at Film Africa. Now, where did the idea come from with your film that you're featuring at um, Film Africa 2017? Where did that idea, story idea come from? Yes, yeah, so um, the KTK story idea, um, back in Ghana, I mean, I grew up in a village where um, we only saw bus like once a week. There's been some time, I think now things have improved. And we saw the buses because people had to go to the markets to go and buy the stuff. And when you miss it, it has to be the following week. And when you are late for, like, it is, it's normally on Wednesday, but when you are late too, you miss it. So it's the following week. And so all this came together. I mean, I traveled to Finland where the train system was so effective, the, the tram was on time. And I asked myself, okay, what if the opposite is the case? And the only opposite I would think of is the situation back home. And then I said, okay, let me just put this to the test. And um, those days, I mean, those the bad transport system, I mean, the, there was no, I mean, lack of access to health healthcare. So you have to travel far into town before you could have access. And if you don't have the car, it means that people that are sick could die as a result. And uh, there's this uh, the high infant mortality rate because pregnant women who are in labor cannot give birth where they are. They have to go to the hospital and then the access is where the, the issue comes and they can't get the car. And so I put all this in together, trying to address serious issue but with very uh, satiric uh, 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 content, let me say. That is the film. Oh. Yeah, in a very satiric way, very comedic way. Yeah. It's a satire, yes, and a satire. at the end of the day, yes. it was it's a comedy, yes, you know. Yeah. Um, in a way, you've talked about the the um, the themes that you have um, that you displayed in the movie, and um, one of the themes also is the role of the herbalist, and um, um, how did you bring that in? Does that have to do with Ghana back in Ghana sixty years ago, or? You yeah. had something else in mind? No, no, I mean, yeah, you just saw the right film. Um, you know, um, in my country, I think it's an African thing, there's, there are lots of superstitions of something happening. You know, you go to the bathroom in the night, they say, don't whistle, because if you whistle, ghosts are going to come around, and we don't know where they'll be coming from, but we still believe them. Today, today, we don't even know if that is true, but we still believe them. And so, since I'm making a period film and I want to make it more Ghanaian, things that people can relate to or some of the myths they've heard about, I wanted to bring that part of it. And in the film, it's not too vivid that this guy was really a wizard. I mean, it was just a hearsay that someone said, oh, we heard, there's an old wizard, we heard this, we heard that it's a hearsay. So it just fits into the superstition that we have grown with as, as Ghanaian. And so that is what I sought to also bring in a bit to, to just make some nostalgia, like some kind of reminiscing to some of the things we've been told. Apart from the, the themes, let's look at the location. Mm -hmm. The location, you know, it, the film all begins, you know, you know, as if the couple, that uh, boy and the... Um, Achua. Achua, um, in a no man's land, yes. bare land. What, you know, what's the inspiration behind that particular location? Okay, so... Um, because of the situation that I was going to put them in, I wanted to make them look very helpless. They are far from rich. And so I didn't really want to introduce buildings because the moment you introduce buildings means there is help. So if you are suffering, why won't you just get into the house and get help? And so back then, like in the 80s, I, I was born in the 80s, but I wasn't too old by then. <laughs> and so, but I, I was told that the lands are, around the railway were very bare. But as at the time I went to do my location scouting, they were encroached. People had built that along the railways, and so that was my biggest challenge. And so I had to film in such, I mean, it forced me to develop a style of shooting very low angle to just expose more of the sky so that you wouldn't see the buildings around. And so you could still believe that this is a no man's land, this is like a land that there's no help. 
And there was a point that we had to get to a town that the railway had been abandoned. So we hired people to clear the bushes to make it quite bare for us, and that is what we used the most. And so the intention was to make it a helpless situation. And the only way you can be helpless is when there are no senses of hope around, and that is why we made it that way. It's a no mark land. Looking at characterization of um, of the movie, you you have um, Lydia yes. who played um, Achua yes. and then you also have um, Ajete, yes. who who's boy. These are two iconic, you know, characters. Um, how did you, were you able to bring it to bear with these two characters? Yeah, I mean, um, they are very humble people. Um, I mean, they've been in the game for a long time. This is, this is my first film after film school, like my debut. And uh, Ajitia and them, when I was in film school, I shot some short films, and then I put them together and invited industry people, actors to come and watch, and he was part of the group that came around, and he loved them. So uh, someone interviewed him on camera, and in the interview, which I watched later, he said he loved my films and he would be glad to work with me someday. And That's I'm interesting. Like, okay. Yes, so <laughs> like, when I watched it, I was like, oh, okay, then you brought yourself, let's do this. Yeah. And so I contacted him, he said he was on board, and then Lydia, I got her, and Lydia was doing some background check uh, with, with Ajit and then on me. That really? Like, Who is he? Oh. What I said, Ajit said, oh, he's good, I've seen his short film. And so that is how the whole thing happened. I said, okay, she read the screen, I was like, oh, she loves it. Like, it looks like a script she wants to do. And after doing it, she said that was the most challenging story she's done in the whole Really? Life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, both of them admitted that this has been the most challenging they've done. And I think that working with them too has been very humbling because they are so down to earth. And me as a new person, I was able to get to them, okay, this is how I want it. Oh, this is not the way to go. Okay, can we adjust it? Sometimes it's very intimidating for a new person to be dealing with such a group of actors. But hey, the experience has been good because they have built themselves. At least this has made you a proud man at the end of the day. Yes. Um, let's look at music because reading your profile, and um, when you started as a student, um, the film you did when you were a student that won you the Pan African um, Television and Film Festival, it has to do with music. Yes. And this one, all through, you know, the film, it was about music. You could hear the sound of the drums. It brought Africa to, you know, to be a, at least it opened up what Africa is actually all about. Um, but um, in the course towards the end of the movie, you know, you had this group, um, Wallace, yeah. if I'm correct, and they brought um, a cappella into it. Yeah. Boy, you know, talks about his music, which is high life music, and it's typical of, you know, Ghana's heritage, high life music. And a cappella. With the a cappella, were you looking into the future of Ghana? Because as at the time, you know, as sixty years back, a cappella wasn't really, you know, yeah. something you know Ghanaian musicians were really into. It was more of high life and things like that. So with a cappella, what were you trying to look at? Yeah, I, I think that a cappella was more futuristic, as you just said, um, because okay, well, the band in there was not Walasi actually. Walasi actually just did the, okay. the background music. And these people were actors, came with music people that I just had to try to put together. And since there was no music, and the voice kind of music, then they had to improvise. And when they have to improvise, they, they don't have ready, they don't have tape, so then they have to look at what is the next thing. So like the couple was like the kind of the next thing, because people, Folk tales, you know, folk tales back in the uh, village. These people sit, when the moon is up, they sit down, the old people and then the young ones, and they sing. And that, those are all a cappella. So it's something that they were used to, but just that they didn't take it onto the commercial uh, levels. But a cappella was something that they were used to, and they told stories with them, and they sang without drums, without any other instrument. So it was also some of the reminiscent part of it that people say, oh, okay, yeah, we could sing, we could do that, and not every had instruments to it, so it was, I don't know if I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looking back at, at that, um, looking back at the, um, the a cappella rendition, there's something the group sang, I mean, the characters who were the musicians on the train, and this was Akete. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, does it have to do with going towards the promised land where everything seems to work? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, so from the beginning of the film, the main goal is to get Sakiti to go and deliver. And now... Deliver, that is to have the baby. To have the baby, sorry. <laughs> and then they ended up having the baby on the train. Mm. So they are now taking the baby to Akete. And it's like the promised land where we've been suffering and, you know, quarreling and fighting with each other here and there just to get to. We're finally getting there. And so the acapella singing Akete is just like, okay, we are taking it to the promised land, the land that we've been dying to get to. Did you feel, finally, did you feel you were going to pull this off because you had just a few characters in the movie? <sighs> it's a very good question. I, I felt I was going to do it. I mean, one thing about me since I started doing short films is once it's scripted, I make sure I achieve it. Once it's scripted, I make sure I achieve it. So when it was scripted, I knew that I would just achieve what's already in the script. And so I knew I was going to pull this off if everyone cooperated from crew to cut. Peter, I must congratulate you and thank you for, you know, willing to talk to us, you know, on Alternative Africa. And um, as we wish you all the best as you look forward to doing something bigger than what you have just done. Thank you very much. Thank you.